Well, I'm moved by a desire both of social justice and also a desire to produce knowledge that uh, is uh, breaking the taken for granted, uh, revealing aspects of reality that are not uh, self-evident. Less is more. For me, this means it's better to publish less work, but work that is more significant, that is truly original in breaking boundaries of knowledge. It's better to do higher quality work than a lot of work that does not have an impact. Well, I'm a social scientist, so we don't really do experiments. I would say that uh, I would maybe for social scientists like me reframe the question as what are the first moments that led me to be curious about social processes? And I can tell you exactly what it is. I was at the house of uh, one of my friends and they had the book by German Greer, The Feminist Mystique. It was a feminist mystique and the word stereotype was in there. And I was very puzzled by what the word stereotype was. And to discover this concept, I felt open to me a new reality of knowledge that I didn't know existed. The idea that we would have, uh, you know, standard ways of depicting specific groups that were caricatural, that did not do justice to the complexity of their lives. So that's basically, I have a very, very clear memory of this. The unexpected, I feel like it's constant stimulation. You never know when uh, the readings or when your thinking are going to be bringing you to new uh, directions. So I think it's a way to have a lot of fun um, without consuming. Uh, and uh, it's a job that is extremely fulfilling. And uh, the curiosity is infinite. So the fun is infinite. Determination, another good piece of advice for me when I was a gradu beginning graduate student was, you know, academic success is 5% intelligence, 95% determination. And I think that uh, maybe that was slightly exaggerated, but, uh, you know, there's a lot to it. I think being able to have the courage to return to a project for which you've received a, a, re a revise and resubmit or, you know, really uh, be able to bring a project to a completion and to its publication so that there can be a conversation with colleagues and the general public around it is absolutely crucial. It's easy, I see it with our graduate students, to get this courage along the way. There are many. I think that uh, through the analytical tools that sociologists have, it's possible for us to shed light on social processes that most people don't understand. Uh, with the, just to give you an example, with the Occupy Wall Street movement, I was uh, asked two days ago to comment in the Canadian media about the meaning of the uh, the movement, and I emphasized the utopian character of the movement and connected that to the the pre New Deal era when there was a lot of utopian ideas in the air. The one that ended gelling is the New Deal, which has transformed 20th century America. So this is an example where if you're not aware of the utopian strands of thinking in Western thought, you cannot make that link. If you interview Joe Blow on the streets, you know, he will not know about this, uh, uh, this connection. So it's having in your head the whole set of references about uh, how societies evolve that allows you to see things that other people cannot see. I was a graduate student in Paris. I worked with uh, Pierre Bourdieu, who was one of the, the great sociologists of the 20th century. He was absolutely mind-blowing. There are moments where I felt like he was really opening a world of uh, new questions for me. So that was extremely important. I think my father, who was not a researcher, he, he had been trained as a uh, in theology, I think a lot of the basic questions that I pursue are an extension of the questions that were interesting for my father, who was a businessman, yet trained in theology.
Well, I think most people just cannot understand that the field like mine exists. It's not like astronomy or chemistry. It's something that is uh, in some ways so unusual that most people don't know that people like me make a living doing this. And it's very hard for people to understand what we do. I really believe very strongly that as social scientists, we develop analytical tools that are far superior to uh, what the scientists would do if they looked at what social scientists do. We, we are able to, we have at our, our fingertips, uh, you know, a toolkit, conceptual toolkits, empirical knowledge that allows us to make sense of uh, social reality uh, in a way that is qualitatively much more sophisticated, precise, empirically grounded than people who don't have that training. Oh, it certainly would be my computer. <laughs> I really like independent uh, musician who, you know, world music. Uh, I'm Canadian, so I have... I'm following what's going on in France a lot. I spent last year on sabbatical in France. I'm following what's going on in Canada. So, uh, you know, not necessarily groups that most people would know about, more underground music. I have a brother who follows the music and fills my, my iPod with very interesting stuff. <laughs> 